Well, good morning, everyone. I'm a little nervous this morning. I'm not used to preaching in front of this many people. And uh, y'all just bear with me, okay? <laughs> I want to make you smile before this thing is over. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19. 30, verse 19. That'd be your cue. We're having fun this morning, y'all. This day I call on the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. Choices. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're talking about all kinds of different choices that we make. Choices have been around since the beginning of time. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, Eve made a choice, and then Adam made a choice, and the consequences, wow, sorry about that, the consequences of the, the choices that were made set things into motion that are still around today. Choices are important. See... If I do like I did last night and order a chili cheeseburger and french fries with cheese and I sit there and I eat about half of it and I'm full and I say, nah, I'm going to finish this. It's a challenge. I just made a choice that even though I was full, I was going to keep going. And guess what? I was miserable last night. I'm still miserable this morning from that stinking chili cheeseburger. But that was a choice that I made. That was what I chose to do. Deuteronomy 30, 19, we just read it. I, I have set before you life and death. Choose life. That is a choice. Life is a choice. Jesus came to give us life and give us life more abundantly. But I believe that abundant life is a choice. It's, it, 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 it revolves around the choices that we make on a daily basis, the things that we choose uh, to do not only in our life that, that might cause us to separate ourselves from God, but the choices that we make to put God first and to do what we feel like God wants us to do in our life. Genera uh, generation. Genesis 37, 18. But they saw him in the distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. This is the story of Joseph, by the way. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns or pits and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe. The ornate robe he was wearing. And then they threw him in a pit. Now a lot of people would say, well that wasn't Joseph's choice. Joseph was thrown into the pit by his brothers. How could that be Joseph's choice? Well, I picture Joseph a lot like I picture David. And a lot of people would disagree with me on this, but... But I picture Joseph a lot like David in the fact that if you read before this, Joseph was coming to his brothers and he's like, yeah, I had a dream. And in that dream, there was all this wheat. And the wheat, your wheat, was bowing before my wheat. And then there were stars. And all of these stars were bowing to my stars. Ha <laughs> ha. I know I'm the little brother, but everything was bound to me. Well, guess what? If you walk around talking smack to your brother, something's going to happen. If you have a brother or you have a sister, you know that to be the case. Did he choose to get thrown? Did he choose to get thrown into the pit? No, he didn't make that choice at that time to go. Hey, I think I want to be stripped down and thrown into a pit. That's what I want to do today. I've been wanting to do that for a while. We're going to do it today. No, that's not what Joseph did. But the fact that he chose when he had those dreams to go to his brothers and brag about it caused something to happen in his brother's mind. 
which eventually led to this place where we're at right now, where he's in the pit. He made that choice. Choices have consequences. But the cool thing about it is, even when we make a bad choice, even when we find ourselves in the pit, maybe because of choices that we made that weren't even intentional. They weren't even something that we meant to do, thinking that down the road, this is going to be the consequence. I know if I don't pay my electric bill, my power is going to get turned off. That's a choice that I make knowing the outcome. But sometimes we make choices not necessarily knowing the full extent of the outcome. But God always has a plan in those situations. When we find ourselves in the pit because of the choices we make, God still has a plan. And God's word doesn't change for us just because we make a bad choice. Now, sometimes we have to go back and fix those things. And we have to work around those things. We have to choose to forgive. There's, I'll get there in a minute. But first of all, we have to change the way we think and the way we see choices. If we don't change the way we think, we're going to be where we're at forever. If you're not happy... Huh? You're meddling. Oh, my wife said I'm meddling. <laughs> we have to change the way we think, or we're going to stay where we're at. If I can't change my thinking to see myself as healthy, to see myself as making good food choices then guess what? This is what you're going to get until I change my thinking. If I choose to say, hey, I, you know, I got paid, but instead of paying my bills, I'm going to go do this. And then I'll worry about the bills later. Guess what? There's consequences for that. You have to see yourself as making better choices you have to see yourself as above and not beneath you have to see yourself as the head and not the tail but for a long time those of us in church have been taught that woe is me we're just making it until jesus comes back well if that's the case then why did jesus say i came to give you life and life more abundantly We have to change the way we see ourselves. Proverbs 23, 7 says this right here. For he is the kind of person who is always thinking about the cost. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. I'm not sure that was the scripture I was supposed to. <laughs> Put, can you change the version right quick? For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. There we go. That's what I wanted y'all to see this morning. So as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As we think in our heart, so are we. Because here's the thing. When we think in our heart one thing, then our actions begin to follow our thoughts. And our actions bring about results that are either good or they're bad, depending on on how we think and the actions that follow what we're thinking. I have to put action to what I think. If I, if, if, if I believe that I'm healthy, well, I can't just keep eating junk. If I think in my mind or I'm trying to think that, that I'm healthy and I keep eating junk, my question would be, do I really see myself as healthy? If I continue to do the same things over and over again and fall into the same pits over and over and over again, it comes down to one thing. I have to change the way I think. I have to see the positive side of situations. I have to find things to have gratitude about. I have to find things to be thankful for in those situations. That's a choice. It's a choice to find things to be thankful about. It's a choice to look on the good side instead of the bad side. And I understand that there's situations that come into our life that 
there doesn't seem to be any good side about it. And last week, if you were here, you heard me say that you don't have to be happy about the situation, but you can be happy and you can be thankful for the things that you learned while you were in that situation. We have to decide, we have to make a choice on whether we're thriving or whether we're just surviving. I think a lot of us are just surviving. I go to, <laughs> hope none of my work people are listening to this, but I go to work every day just waiting for five o'clock, surviving until five o'clock. I find myself sometimes, live, well, a lot of times living paycheck to paycheck and just feeling like I'm surviving within that that first and 15th, that time period there. I feel like I'm just surviving. I'm not thriving. Well, thriving doesn't necessarily have to do with money. Thriving has to do with relationships. Thriving has to do with being thankful. Thriving has to do with your ability to love others. That, to me, is what thriving is all about. Are you surviving or are you just thriving are you a thermostat or are you a thermometer you've heard me say this before do when, when, when people are around you do you change the atmosphere do you set the tone of the conversation or do you allow your thoughts and your feelings to be changed and to be pulled down by others that are around you because you're just taking the temperature. You're responding to what the temperature is, so to speak. You're responding to what they're putting out instead of being the thermostat that changes the environment. Do you see yourself in lack or blessing? And again, a lot of people would take this, this stuff that I'm talking about and say, you know, he's, he's preaching a money, money message. That's not, that's not it. Some of this can be associated to money and finances and financial success, I guess you would call it. But there's so much more to it. If we, if we get one track mind onto that, we're going to lose out on a lot because thriving is more than that. Thriving is all areas of your life, your relationships your friendships, your work, all of these things. Lack of blessing. We all know the story of Eve, and I, I, I just said it just a second ago. Eve had everything that she needed. Everything. When God created the garden, and God created Adam and Eve and put them in the garden, they had everything they needed to thrive. But what Eve saw was not that she had everything she needed to thrive and be happy. What Eve saw was the one thing she couldn't have. The one thing she didn't have. When Satan came to Eve and said, yeah, I know God said you couldn't eat of that tree, but... There's a reason why he said that. All of a sudden, Eve started thinking, well, you know what? I can eat everything else. I can't eat that. I want that. Guys, that is a mindset of lack. We've got to get to a point where we choose to see what we have and the blessings that we have in our life instead of seeing and looking at the things that we don't have. Thankfulness, gratitude will take you further than anything else will. Are you an in spite of or because of kind of person? What do I mean by that? This is another choice that we get to make. In spite of the fact that things may not seem like they're going right. I'm going to press forward. I'm still going to love people. I'm going to guard my heart. I'm going to guard my mind. I'm going to guard my attitude. Or is it because things are going so bad, 
I'm going to snap at everybody. And I'm so bad at this. I'm stepping on my own toes. I'm going to snap at people. I'm going to let my attitude go down the drain. I'm going to pull myself back into the cave and not talk to anybody. That's unfortunately what I have a tendency to do. And that's something that I'm working on. But that's what I mean by in spite of or because of. Is it in spite of a situation you're still going to do the right thing? You're going to make the choice to do the right thing? Or is it because of this bad thing that happened, I'm going to make a choice? Because it's a choice. And I make it the wrong one all the time. Are you an in spite of person or because of? And the last thing I'm going to leave you with is simply this. We have a choice on how we see our valley. Psalms 23 talks about, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The valley, the place of death, but who's death? What do I mean by that? Well, is it, is it a place where the valley kills you spiritually, mentally, emotionally? Or is it a place where you begin to kill your giants? Is it a place where the things, when, when you're in that, you learn certain things, you, you begin to, to, to take lessons from the valley, you begin to see these things over and over again, because let's be honest, a lot of us spend our time just going around the same mountain time and time again. We start to notice maybe what takes us down that path or where we're going around the mountain. Let's let that thing die in the valley. I'm a firm believer that what you need to get to the mountaintop is found in the valley below. If you're going to go climb Mount Everest, you've got to go to base camp first and buy all your equipment or you're never going to reach the summit. Bad stuff happens, but we've got a choice. To take the stuff that happens to us in the valley, take whatever good we can find in it, let our giants die in the valley, and climb up out of it. I love you this morning. Hey, I want to thank everybody for being here. I uh, appreciate it. And uh,